Uh, hello students, uh, welcome to the engineering chemistry lab. Uh, today we are going to discuss about or uh, do the experiment about the size dependent color variation of copper oxide nanoparticles by spectrometry. Uh, before that I want to acknowledge uh, thank uh, Dr. Chandan Maiti for making this experiment practical and then Mr. Shivaraj for his assistance. Okay, so before going to the uh, real experiment, let's talk about the synthetic and then characterization part of the nanoparticles. And then nanoparticles are uh, very, very small particles which are of 10 to the power of nine, minus 9 meters, okay, which we cannot see by our naked eye. Okay, so in broad way, these nanoparticles can be synthesized in a two broad ways that is top down method and then bottom up method. The top down method involves breaking down the bulk material into smaller particles, breaking into smaller and smaller so till the point it reaches the nanoparticles or else the bottom up process where the atoms uh, or either which is in the solution can be reduced, made into atoms and then they combine together, cluster and then you end up with the nanoparticles. Okay, and then to get more information about this, it, it can be either synthesized by physical method or the chemical method. Under the physical method, we can do ball milling process means crushing the bulk metals, uh, bulk materials to nanoparticles or you can do gas condensation or chemical vapor condensation or laser ablation to get the nanoparticles. Coming to the chemical method, with chemical synthesis that is sol gel method or precipitation method that is by reduction process we can arrive or achieve this nanoparticles. Okay, in our experiment uh, we are going to adopt this precipitation technique. Okay, okay so uh, more interesting about the nanoparticles are okay so once the bulk material which goes to the nano, nano regime they started showing a very interesting properties interesting electronic properties optical mechanical and then magnetic properties and then these nanoparticles not only restricted to the metals or metal oxide it can be silica uh, it can be uh, polymers it can be carbon based materials okay coming back to our uh, experiment okay which is about carbon oxide nanoparticles so how this carbon oxide uh, nanoparticles are prepared. Okay, the main source for this uh, carbon, no, sorry, main source for this copper is the copper sulphate. Okay, or combination of copper sulphate, sodium carbonate and then citrate, sodium citrate. Okay, so it forms a copper solution. Okay, and then what happens is like when you add, combine uh, all these chemicals. Okay, okay, so you have to take uh, the Benedict solution. Again, I will repeat it. Benedict solution is the copper sulphate, sodium carbonate plus citrate solution. To that, we can add glucose. Okay, which is having the uh, aldehyde group in it. Okay, in presence of sodium hydroxide, we need to add a sodium hydroxide. We'll go back to the tabular column. I can show you that this is the Benedict solution, and this is the reducing agent, and then we may have the sodium hydroxide, which will increase the rate of the reaction. Okay, and then you can see that uh, in the first process, which is an oxidation reaction, gives away the two electron, and then in the second step. Okay, you can see that the copper citrate solution, which is in 2 plus oxidation state, uh, takes up the two electron in the presence of base and then it forms the copper oxide. You can see that the copper has been reduced to oxidation state, reduced from copper 2 to copper 1. Okay, and then this is the overall reaction. Okay, so let us go to the experiment. Okay, the first experiment, uh, first part of the experiment is we are going to uh, measure the optical uh, properties of the co copper oxide and then interesting thing about the nanoparticles are, okay. Uh, whenever we change the size of the nanoparticles, they will exhibit a different colors. That is because of the surface plasma resonance. Okay? Say for example, if smaller the size, it will show a different color, larger the size or bigger the size, it will show a different color. That is because of the, the amount of electron cloud that may be present on the surface of the nanoparticles which respond to the incident of the light. Okay? So, so let us go to the experiment. Okay? So what we have to have is like, we need to have a Benedict solution, okay, so which is a bluish color, and then a glucose solution, and then a sodium hydroxide solution of various concentration. Okay, let's do the experiment. Okay, students, let's start the first part of the uh, copper oxide nanoparticle synthesis, uh, which involves the optical uh, uh, measurement, okay, by our naked eye. So for that, we need uh, a stock solution of Benedict, uh, sugar solution, reducing agent, and then. Uh, sodium hydroxide because we need to measure 0.5 ml of uh, Benedict solution and then 4.5 ml of uh, glucose and then uh, and then uh, the sodium hydroxide volume varies. Okay, let us do the sample one first. 
okay so for that we need to use burette let us fill this burette okay since we are going to take 0.5 ml we are going to add it in this okay sorry we are going to use the standard flask 0 0.1 0 0.5 ml then we need to add 4.5 ml of glucose so sugar solution is here so we can use the other burette to this sample one sugar solution 4.5 yeah or instead of that we can make it up that is perfect so it should be the lawyer ministers we should do it a bit carefully when you are closing this and then you can shake this first sample so that the solution is homogeneous so likewise uh, we man we can make the sample 2 sample 3 sample 4 sample 5 by keeping the volume of a benedict 0.5 and then volume of glucose pour 0.5 and then uh, varying the sodium hydroxide. So, we have prepared various concentration of uh, sodium hydroxide. So, take 45 ml of this and then make uh, all the other four samples. Uh, now, we students we have the uh, various concentration that is sample 1 uh, we have like 0.5 ml of Benedict solution 4.5 ml of glucose and then we have uh, rest 45 ml water. And then going to the second sample uh, which contains 0 0.5 ml of Benedict, 4 0.5 ml of uh, glucose and then 45 ml of 0 0.0001 molar sodium hydroxide solution. Likewise, so uh, both the glucose and the Benedict are uh, in the same volumes okay, 0 0.5 and then 4.5 and then we just vary the 45 ml of sodium hydroxide solution from 0 0.001, 0 0.01 and then 0 0.1. Okay. So, now uh, we have the 50 ml of that. Our next task is to transfer this solution into a yeah, tube. Okay. So, we are going to use uh, this labeled tubes transfer one first solution which is labeled one to this one carefully. Uh, now, students uh, please carefully observe the color of the sample we can see um, so most of them are having the similar color now we are going to heat this uh, sample uh, in the tube uh, and then in a water bath so what we are going to do is like we are going to transfer the sample into the water bath that is the uh, 500 ml beaker containing water and then we will heat it for 5 minutes. So, now you can see that uh, in 2 minutes there is a change in the color uh, after 4 minutes let us wait for 1 more minute. Okay, guys uh, after 5 minutes uh, keeping in a water bath uh, you can see that the Benedict solution which was originally uh, bluish green in color okay, for all of them you can see after heating it the color has changed okay you can see from the lower concentration of sodium hydroxide from yellow to a reddish in color okay and then we can also say that uh, the size also varies okay okay now let's go to the uh, second part of the experiment okay fine okay so now let's do the second part of the experiment okay so that is uh, we are going to make this uh, uh, suspended solution that is a copper oxide nanoparticle suspended solutions and then we are going to measure the turbidity of that that is why I am going to show you soon the uh, turbidometer how we are going to use it. Okay. So, for this uh, we have already have the Benedict solution ready okay, a stock solution and then a glucose solution ready and then here we need only uh, uh, 
sodium hydroxide 0.01 molar solution okay so likewise as i showed before okay we uh, we have to make uh, four different samples labeled as a b c d okay and then to the first tube add 0.5 ml of benedict solution to that add 4.5 ml of glucose that is a reducing agent and then add 45 ml to the first tube and then keep it to the water bath uh, in a boiling condition uh, for 5 minutes okay and then you can see from varying from a to d okay what you can see is like uh, the molar concentration the ratio between the benedict solution and the glucose solution remains same and then we are going to vary the sodium hydroxide concentration okay okay students uh, as per our discussion on uh, table 2 uh, where we are going to measure the uh, turbidity of the copper oxide we have prepared the solution a b c and then d okay let's transfer the solution uh, a to the glass vials or glass tube because uh, this solution also need to be heated in a water bath so in, in all of this sample we are using 0 0.01 molar solution of sodium hydroxide Okay, students. Uh, this is the second part of the experiment. This is the color observation that you have. You can see it like uh, they are all almost on the similar color. That's because we have used 0.01 concentration of sodium hydroxide. Now our next task is to measure the turbidity of this uh, solution. So once we complete the second part of the experiment, uh, we have seen the reddish uh, color of the copper oxide nanoparticles. Our next task is to measure the turbidity of this sample and you know that this is the uh, turbidity uh, instrument uh, and then basic principle involved in the turbidity is like uh, uh, the turbidity will be related to the size of the particle and also it will also uh, determines the concentration higher the concentration of the uh, the suspension that is present okay and the turbidity will be very high and then the larger the particle the turbidity very very high so before start using this instrument we need to calibrate this uh, instrument by using a standard turbidity solution that is 40 NTU. So let us take this standard solution to calibrate. I will put it into the instrument cap it and then calibrate to yeah somewhere in the 40 it's ready to go so now the next task is to measure the turbidity of the sample a b c and then d we have to uh, take the 10 ml of so for that we need to measure ten ml of this solution and transfer it in a beaker and then we need to add conditioning agent so conditioning agent the role of the conditioning agent is to keep the uh, the particles nanoparticles to suspend not to settle it okay which is the mixture of glycerol and then ethanol so 10 ml of this so this is the a solution 10 ml and then 10 ml of the conditioning solution conditioning agent and then transfer it to the tube then need to clean this tube because it should not contaminate the instrument then put it back then cap it 
and note down the values. Okay. So, in this case 86 NTU is the value for the concentration A. Okay. Likewise, you can take 10 ml of B and then uh, into the beaker and then 10 ml of uh, conditioning agent and then transfer it into the tube and then measure all the turbidity uh, uh, coming out of uh, other solution B, C and then D. Okay, guys, once you measure the turbidity of all the uh, samples A, B, C and then D. Okay, so, you can note it down, you can put the values here. Once you have this value, uh, go for the plotting the data that is in this axis quantity of sodium hydroxide and then turbidity. Okay, and then you may you will expect the uh, the curve or the plot uh, starting from the origin. Okay, and then uh, to understand this uh, pattern, you can see that uh, in the in the sample A we have a 45 ml of sodium hydroxide compared to D, which is a higher in concentration. That will push the reaction faster. Okay, and then what will happen is that will eventually increase the size and then increase the turbidity. So, you may expect that decrease in the turbidity. Okay? So, and then uh, you can also see that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the concentration quantity of the sodium hydroxide decreases based on that even though copper is present here in constant, the size also decreases. Okay? And then you can plot it from here uh, if you are unknown copper solution, unknown sample has been given to you, you can plot it and then you can extrapolate it and then you can determine the quantity of sodium hydroxide that has been used and then from there you can back calculate somewhere here in between back calculate the copper uh, has been given to you. Thank you.